It's time to rethink, renew, and reimagine retirement. Welcome to Retire Repurposed. This podcast is dedicated to help people transition into fulfilling and purposeful retirements. Retirement is a big life change. In fact, the two most dangerous years of a person's life are the year they were born and the year they retire. We believe that retirement is not the end, rather the beginning of what could be the most impactful season of a person's life. So don't retire, become repurposed. Well, I'm your host, Jared Sebesta. I'm the co-founder of Retire Repurpose alongside Ben Tages. Thank you so much for joining us today. Maybe you found us on the radio. Maybe you found us online. Regardless, head over to iTunes, find our podcast, click subscribe, and better yet, leave us a quick positive rating and review. If you just take a moment and do that, we would appreciate that so much. Now, this podcast is all about retirement, but it's not about money. It's about the non-financial parts of retirement, which many times can be even more challenging than the financial. Few people could just flip the switch from working a career 30, 40, maybe 50 plus years, and then shutting it off one day on Retirement Friday without methodical steps to living what we would call a repurposed retirement. If you want more for your life and your retirement, then you have come to the right place. Well, on this episode, we continue our series on retirement habits. Healthy habits are important at any time in your life, but especially in retirement. Time is one of your greatest assets if you are a retiree, but if you have bad habits, that time will work against you. Today, we cover the habit of growing. John Maxwell has said many times, if you're not growing, you're dying. Furthermore, growing is a key component to living repurposed. And in this podcast, we're going to cover six specific ways for you to continue to grow beyond your working years and through retirement. Enjoy this episode. All right, folks, and welcome back to the podcast here. We're so glad that you're joining us today. We are continuing our mini series on retirement habits. We've got a great show on tap here today, and we are going to talk about the habit of growing. And this is just a foundational message when it comes to um, living a repurposed life. So we are so glad that you are joining us today. A couple of announcements. Again, we've got a Facebook group called Becoming Repurposed in Retirement. Join a growing community of people that refuse to accept the typical American dream retirement. Look for all all the latest content on repurposed right to the Facebook page. You're going to see more in the future. So again, if you want to get connected to everything, uh, all the messages, all the special content, go to our Facebook page and join. Also too, just starting last week, we are now on YouTube. So if you don't subscribe on iTunes, you're not into uh, podcasting, maybe you missed a show on the radio, you want to find us, an easy way to find us, just go to youtube.com, search retire repurposed, and you're going to find a playlist there and we're going to load all the shows from now on on that show. I actually backlogged about the last 20 shows. So again, missed a show recently. Find us on Facebook, find us on iTunes, and you can find us now on YouTube. Ben Tay just joins me on the show here today. This has been a really fun um, uh, mini series. It's hard to even call it a mini series because I think we're about nine episodes deep into this and we've got several more coming up. But man, we can't, we cannot harp on this idea of habits um, enough when it comes to retirees. Yeah, I think it's an actual series. It's moved past mini series into series and um, you know we started this year um, like like a lot of people do you reflect on you know what does your life look like and one of the ways we know we can get improvement is by creating better habits in our life and today is a, that's what today's about again talking about a great habit the habit of always always growing growing yeah absolutely it's a foundational message we're gonna get into that deep here today uh, if you've missed the last couple of shows just last week we talked about the habit of laughter and and uh, just to kind of recap that one quickly, that's an important one. And it ties into the show we did before that on social connections. There's definitely a connection between our social connections and the amount of joy and laughter we see. Again, it's easy to bridge the gap because on the other end of the spectrum is isolation and depression. Yeah, you brought it up last week so well, and I, I couldn't agree more about how important that is. And when I when I see retirees today and I start to, you know, you're working with somebody and you can kind of see that um, maybe they're missing that last, like that true joy, right? So not only laughter, Jared, but to be a person filled with joy many times can just start with the physical action of laughter. And then you talked about the blue zone stuff. Listen to listen to Dan Butner stuff because that you know that was one of those key things from last week I picked up on mm -hmm. was how important it is for people who live longer 
to have that social connection, which usually ends in some kind of laughter. So good. Yeah, it's hard to uh, be around friends and people that you like. And even if you're talking about serious topics and serious um, stuff, and we've all got serious stuff going on in life, it's hard not to have um, some joy just being around other people. Obviously, we're created to be around other people. So there's, again, this connection between social ability, friends, and laughter. So if you miss those shows, need a little bit more joy, need a little bit more laughter in your life, go back and listen to those shows as well. So on today's show, we already kind of teed it up for folks. We're talking about this idea of growing, and we took this basically right out of the pages of our workbook in Repurpose University, this idea of growing, and we kind of even um, lined it up or, or compared it to this idea of just maintaining. Yeah, I mean, if you go back, and and, and I would encourage our listeners to look into Repurposed University. Um, we put a lot of work into that video series, and there's stuff that um, you will learn from there um, that will help you um, just live this really great repurposed retirement. Uh, but one of the things we did early in the workbook is we kind of looked at what does a person who is retired look like and what are some key words with somebody who is, you know, kind of retiring by the world standards that's retiring by, you know, the, Hey, I just don't have to go to work. So things are better now type standards. And then on the other side of the page, we looked at what is a person that, that, that really embodies who a repurposed retiree looks like. Mm -hmm. And to one of the words, on the retired by, you know, the world standard said maintaining. And under that, we put, I'm okay with staying the same and therefore I'm slowly moving backwards. I think that's a key thing. When we think we're just maintaining, you are going backwards. Mm -hmm. Everything good is upstream. And by default, as we age, and again, both age and just the, the decision to retire and not go to work, you will start to move backwards right. in nearly every area of your life. Yeah. So maintaining doesn't work. We're about growing. On the other side of the page, and you see that that word of growing. I am constantly learning and reflecting on new experiences. That is so um, that is so important for somebody coming into retire re retirement and using that your newfound time to grow. Just huge, hugely important. I think you really hit the nail on the head. This idea of maintaining. Um, you can look at retirement when you look through it through that lens. It can look like a very dangerous time of life because, again, you're taking away guardrails. You're taking away uh, some elements of purpose. You're taking away social connections. You're taking away that, you know, I'm going to go to work and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust it and I'm going to win today. I'm going to get those wins. All of that goes away quickly. And if you think that you're going to stay on that steady um, path that you've been on your whole life, that is not going to happen. And so again, we don't want to like scare people, but that's a, that's a huge thing. John Maxwell even has a quote, uh, that we, we, we tend to use a lot in this, in this area. Yeah. What does he say? If you're not growing, you're dying, uh, which I believe, um, I agree with what Maxwell says there. And one of the saddest things like before the show, Jared, we were talking about, um, you had a meme pop up on, uh, on some, one of the retirement areas that you follow, yeah. um, share that because I was, I was sad too. I'm like, is this what retirees here are being told? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right before we started, I said, look at this, Ben. And I kind of said, it's cringeworthy. And I, I, I don't know, I, I'll apologize if I offend anybody, but I see this stuff and I cringe, but it shows up. I follow a lot of retirement groups on Facebook and this popped up and it was a lady, it was a cartoon of a lady sitting in bed. And she said, I'm pretty certain that there's nothing more satisfying in life than sleeping while somebody else gets ready for work. All right. So I get it. It's a joke. Right. Like I get it. It's satire. I speak uh, sarcasm fluently. So I, I understand the joke and the humor that they're trying to make there. But I really I, you know, if I'm being honest, like, do we really think that do we really? I, I, I'm hoping people don't actually think that. You know, I get it. It feels good to sleep in. It feels good not to have the stress of work occasionally. But is really the best thing in life is to be sleeping and sleeping in while other people are working. That kind of makes me a little bit sad. Yeah, me too. And I think it, it, it really puts a negative view of work. Um, out there, it's just like, man, as long as I don't have to go to work, I'm okay. You know, it's like the you, you see people that say, hey, uh, you know, a, a bad day at golf or a bad day fishing is still better than a good day at work. Right. That is so untrue. Mm -hmm. For anybody who's feeling that way today, get a different job, yeah. make a change in the way you look at your work. Um, but anyway, we're, we're digressing, but that's so important. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason we're bringing that up is 
retirees today should not look at their life that way. They should look at their life like an extension of who they are and continue to make a difference in the kingdom of God, in their communities, in their families, because now is when we need them more than ever. Yeah, absolutely. I think the mindset in retirement should be, again, we're playing offense. You've been playing offense your whole life, and so that doesn't change now just because you're retired and don't have to go to work. So today we lined out six ways to grow in retirement. We're all about growing today on today's show. The first one that we came up with, Ben, uh, today is adopt a healthier lifestyle. Now, that could mean a gamut of things, but what comes to mind when we say that? Well, what typically comes to mind is diet, right? It's like, let's make sure we're, you know, getting the right nutrition in our bodies, right? Um, A healthier lifestyle typically means diet. I'm not an expert there, uh, but I would say that that is something, when you look at habits of people who are living healthy, they generally have a a very, um, there's a habit to what they put into their body, both Mm -hmm. the, you know, the fluid intake, but with with water, but also just the nutrients they take in. So I think, you know, it's hard to, to really look look at um, living this repurposed lifestyle if you're letting your body mm-hmm. go downhill. So setting strong growth um, you know, goals within within your diet, yep. very important. Absolutely. I, I would even include movement. We did an entire show um, just on movement. Uh, again, we don't have to join gyms and do CrossFit, but uh, walking, brisk walking, um, hiking, pickleball. You know, how many times has that been brought up in today's world uh, amongst retirees? But you know, it almost goes into this idea of kind of our mental state too, right? Ben, it's not just physical. Yeah, I think the healthy, the healthiest retirees have healthy minds, right? And that goes beyond just a social connection. It goes uh, beyond that. I think that's important. But the way that we, um, you know, really reflect on a day, the way that we uh, feel about others, the way that we practice the idea of gratitude, Mm -hmm. right? You can grow, um, you can grow your ability to um, love others. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Um, It's something I'm trying to work on myself right now. It's like, I can, even if I struggle in a certain area, by taking little steps towards gratitude and and realizing how good I have it, and then reflecting on where I've fallen short, you can actually grow the capacity to love people around you. So I think that's a great, um, you know, thing to remind ourselves mentally how we can, you know, grow. Yeah, absolutely. I'm even thinking about last week's show on laughter. You know, I mean, even even engineering into your day more social connections and laughter. That's a way to grow as well. I think one thing that people need to remember. You know, when you bring up the word diet, like we all hate that word because we all think of like, I have to starve myself and I have to eat, you know, carrot sticks and, and, uh, you know, snap peas for the next, you know, four months. Right. I think when it comes to having a healthier lifestyle, we have to think in terms of like adding small things instead of taking away, add it. You want to be healthier in movement, add the walk. You know, you want to be healthier in diet add a, 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 you know, a, a smoothie in the morning. You know what I mean? Don't get focused on the takeaway. Focus on the the addition to our day. I love it. I had a smoothie this morning as well. Right. <laughs> well, you're in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, but I believe that. I think adding is so much easier than taking away. Um, but just being mindful, mm-hmm. being careful of what's going into your body. Um, I'm guilty of that too. It's like every once in a while, it's like Ben, is this the right thing for you to be doing? Um, God gave us one body. We have to take care of it. And and again, when we every time every time we're talking about growth, we're talking about habits. What I want people to do is like I am trying like i see myself as a more fit person right make the decision from that lens mm-hmm. like yeah what would a healthy person and, and like james clear says as you continually have those votes of of yes this is who i am by the way of habits mm-hmm. it, it really becomes you, you really and you know embrace who yep. you are as a healthier person yep absolutely you start operating in that headspace that you have created through habits so that was number one. Number two, we came up with set short-term goals or commitments. We're going to talk about that, but also have a long-term vision. A lot of stuff that you read out there says have goals, long-term goals. We we say that with with a bit of a caveat. Well, I think it's really hard for somebody you know that's coming into their sixties and seventies, whatever that age is, to say I'm going to set this long-term goal. So I I believe in that. I think it's important to keep that in mind. But if we can start with commitments, which will drive habits which will drive lasting change, right? That's what we're talking about. So I love setting these short-term commitments, but the reason that I'm doing those short-term commitments is because I know that if I commit to this, it'll bring me a habit that will reinforce uh, what we're going to talk about next, our personal values, but that will drive lasting change. Mm-hmm. And that, and that really is important for a retiree. And don't think just because you're 60 and 70, whatever age you are, 
that you shouldn't have this forward, you know, visionary look, right? It's right? a vision, though. It's, it's a vision, right? right? We have to have the commitments and the habits to, to really reinforce that. I think when it comes to vision, that is such a powerful thing for us personally. I think it's a powerful thing for our family. I would encourage retirees, and, I, and, we, and we've talked about doing this amongst our families, and I, I'm working on this right now with, with my wife and kids, but, you know, setting a vision for our family, getting it down on paper, and making sure that everybody knows what that is. That's extremely powerful. And to me, I would say almost more powerful than a long-term goal that we you know, just arbitrarily commit to for me, for some reason or another. Yeah, it really puts it on the wall, right? It says, hey, this is who we are, mm-hmm. right? So then again, it helps you engineer your day to say, if we're, if we're people are trying to grow, so I'm saying be somebody mm-hmm. in retirement that says, I'm a person who's growing. I'm going to make decisions. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make these commitments and habits in my day that allow me to become a person who does grow and doesn't just maintain and move backwards. That's a great segue into point number three, identify your personal values. Again, so now we have a vision, but now let's talk about our personal values. How do people do that? Well, I think look at those areas that are most important to you, right? You start there because if you're going to really, um, you know, say, hey, I am tr- trying to become this different person, you you probably, um, you'll probably have times where you let yourself down, number one, and that's okay. But when, when, I, when I want to start to drive change in how I'm either behaving or how I'm um, interacting with others, I'm always trying to say, okay, what type of person did God create me to be? Mm-hmm. Spend the time reflecting on what talents, what skills did he give me? Um, and then also look at what is the most important things. What are those things that do not shift, mm-hmm. that do not change with the time? You know, you, you look deep into those areas and and. That's where that self-analysis needs to start. Yeah, yeah. I think the self-analysis part is huge because you could say, or at least I could just say it, and I'm using myself as an example, like, you know, being a husband is really important to me. Being a father is very important to me. Um, You know, living in alignment with how God created me, you know, outside of the walls of my home and my work is important to me. Okay, so now I could ask myself, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how am I doing in those areas? Seven out of 10? Okay, that's pretty good. So I got some room room to grow. You know, could I make it a, a goal? You know, I'm using air quotes. In six months, I want that to be a nine. You know, what do I need to do to make that a 10? Things like that. So again, this whole idea of identifying the values and then doing the analysis to figure out where we have areas to grow. Yeah, then go back, set those commitments. Yep. Say, hey, Journal this is, this is yep, this is who I, <laughs> right. who I, what's really important to me. This is who I am. So set those commitments, drive the habits to be really become and, and really embrace who God created you to be. Way number four that you can become uh, growing in retirement is read more. Man, this is a big one. You know, I mean, the, the most successful people in the world, it seems like they just can't seem to put books down. And uh, that's, a, that's a great habit, certainly, to pick up in retirement. Yeah, or have people read to you. you know? That's what we do. <laughs> that's what I always do. You know, I love Audible. And, and, you know, I'm getting through more books all the time and, and hearing from people. Um, and be careful what you choose to read. You know, I, I think um, there's there's time for those fun books and stuff. But I think if we're trying to grow, um, think, do I want, you know, this, do I want more of this in my life? And it's not all self-improvement. Most of the stuff I listen to are things that, that are self-improvement in nature. But I think any um, real reading, if I had time, I think I could do it. But again, I what I'm reading for today is I'm trying to just consume as much material as I can. I'm trying to learn as much as I can. That That's exciting for me. And that doesn't matter if I'm working or someday when I retire and repurpose, mm-hmm. I will continue to you know look for new content because I really enjoy it mm-hmm. and, I, and I love learning from others. I can't remember what exactly the stat is. It's like if you read... I want to say like three books, five books, maybe it's like 10 books. If you read, if you read the top 10 books on a certain subject, if you read those, you're, you're basically considered an expert. You would know more than like 95% of people on planet Earth on that subject if you read those 10 books. I mean, that, that's, actually, that's actually pretty inspiring if you think about it. You could pick a topic that you may or may not know a ton about and how long does it take to read 10 books, you know, a, a month or three, you know, if you put your mind to it and you could literally become an expert on that topic. That's pretty, that's pretty inspiring to think about. Yeah. And I think for a retiree, um, you may find things as you're getting more into reading and changing it. Oh, I really think I could do more of whatever that, you know, and learn how to do new things, which I think that's, that's our next, that's our next point, right? Yeah. Learning. And I think, um, as we read, I think that can also, 
um, drive us to be more curious about following through on learning anew. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe it's a hobby. Um, Maybe it's another, maybe it's something that you were actually good at. Maybe you had skills and talent that you never knew about it because you didn't have the time. And so I think learning is huge. Yeah, Ben kind of gave it away here already, but point number five is learn. You mentioned the word curious. I think that that's that's an aspect of retirement that certainly doesn't get talked about in today's world. Society's not telling you like, hey, be curious in retirement, but what a spectacular time to do it. But you you touched on a really good point. You know, in, in any given time in my life, there's something out there I would love to pursue. I just don't have the time to do it. And now, you know, and some of the things I have had time and you, you, you go down the rabbit trail, you learn, you move on, maybe you take it deeper. You know, what if, what if, what a fantastic time to be curious uh, when, when you have the time and, and even engineer it into your schedule and make it a habit. Yeah, curiosity should be part of you growing. So, um, again, if, if we're just status or status quo and we aren't looking for for change in our life to grow, um, you will go backwards. Um, I love YouTube. I'm a big YouTuber. I love um, watching people who know so much about these different areas. Yeah. Um, in fact, in, in right now, we're going to, in, in a, this little workshop area, I'm putting up a, a small TV in there so I can actually watch YouTube and and do whatever that hobby is, whatever I'm working on, because I think it's it's so we live in a, a day to day with so much technology that allows people in retirement specifically to continue to learn. I mean, where would you, if you went right. 10, 15 years ago yeah, exactly. to find that information? And now you're able to just go on YouTube, be able to learn um, these new things and and bring it into your life. Yeah, it's great. All right. So we're on the cusp of number six here. But again, just a, just a, a quick recap of where we've come. We've, we've contrasted these ideas of maintaining versus growing. Typical American dream retirement says just maintain, relax, uh, but there is no such thing. We have to be growing. We talked about adopting a healthier lifestyle, setting sh- short-term goals while having a long-term vision, identifying personal values, reading more, and learning. This last point here, um, maybe you, you could argue doesn't fall under that caveat, but if you look at our definition of growing, it says I'm constantly learning and reflecting on experiences. I think actually it does. I think it does too. Um, you know, forgiving others. I, I think that's an area of growth because if you're not doing that, it's really hard to grow. We've all come across either people, um, certainly I, th- I think it's something with, when people age maybe, um, they do tend to get more hardened. I think we can get stuck. We can let things that um, have bothered us in the past um, really hold us back from growing into who God wants us to be. Wow, I'm getting emotional because I'm actually dealing with some of this right now. You know, I, I think um, when you have something in your life that um, has held you back um, for more than a week, um, certainly, um, you know, maybe it's a year, you know, make amends, figure out why that is holding you back, why you have that um, that bitterness in your life because God didn't doesn't want us to walk through life um, holding on to things, right? He's a for, he, God forgives us, right? Um, that's one of the beautiful things of a relationship with Him is He does forgive. We need to be that, uh, be a, be people that forgive, so that we can continue to grow. Um, certainly in any stage of life, but for sure in retirement. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this conversation on the habit of growing. Well, just to piggyback on some of the things that Ben mentioned at the end of the show regarding forgiveness, I think this is one area of a retiree's life that doesn't get talked about enough or maybe not talked about at all. You know, the truth is, is that our work and our careers and the busyness of life, you know, they're great distractions from some of the hurts that we may have in our hearts. And like we said, sometimes the biggest things holding us back from walking into God's fullness, which by the way, is the ultimate hope of becoming repurposed, is ourselves. So we encourage you to do some exploration. Is there unforgiveness in your heart? Explore areas where maybe bitter roots have taken hold and let God heal those places. And this is scary. It can be tough for a lot of people, but it really is the only path to healing and freedom. So what do you think of today's show, Growing? You know, never has there been a better time to take growing seriously than in retirement, but also the most crucial. Because like John Maxwell said, if you're not growing, you're dying. A great next step would be Repurpose University. 
It's a five lesson class specifically designed for retirees and pre-retirees. It's a course that you can take personally, you can bring it to your small group or maybe to your church. If you want more information, very easy. Just go to our website, retirerepurposed.com. Until next time, I'm Jared Sebesta. Remember, don't retire, become repurposed. We'll see you then. Securities offered through Avantax Investment Services, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment Advisory Services offered through Avantax Advisory Services. Insurance Services offered through an Avantax-affiliated insurance agency.